Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Phil. Welcome back to BeginnerDJLessons.com. In this week's video, I'm going to be running you through a question I get asked all the time, which is where to set cue points on different songs. So in this video, I'm going to show you the five most common places that I tend to put cue points on songs that I'm about to play and my thought process when I'm doing it. Let's get into it. <laughs> Okay guys, so I wanted to start out with a quick tip for you that I'm surprised a lot of people don't actually know about. There's a program called Mixed In Key, which you can use, you can drop your songs into this program and then it'll identify the speed of the track and the key of the track. So when you drop them back into Serato afterwards or whatever DJ program you're using, you know what key the song is in. If you wanna know why it's important to mix in key, I've done a whole video up here that you can watch. Anyway, the thing that I find most people don't know about is the program Mixing Key actually puts hot cues in place for you that are usually quite good and quite helpful. So let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm using Mixed In Key 8, by the way. Okay guys, so this is a program Mixing Key. If you come to Serato DJ, but I have to say this works with any program, you'll see that I've got a song here, Riverside by Tujamo, and it's got no cue points set at all, because you can see up here there's nothing set. First thing you need to do is disconnect from your DJ deck, so it just goes to one track mode, like this. So you're gonna take this song, you're gonna drag it into mixing key like this. And it will do its thing, and when it's complete, it will tell you the tempo, the key of the track, the energy level of the track, and it'll tell you how many cue points it's set, okay? After you've done that, you can come back to Serato and you just drag it up into this Analyze Files up here. And it will then copy across information like BPM and key of track, stuff like that. Now, the interesting thing I've noticed about mixing key 8 is when you drag it up, the cue points are still not there. So what you have to do is come back to mixing key, click it, go to Export Cue Points, then go back to Serato, and drop it in the second time, or you could have done it the first time, now you know this tip. Now when you drag it up, boom, you can see there's a ton of cue points here. Now, the reason I tell you about this is because I actually use these cue marks quite a lot, mainly from a tracking point of view. So, for example, if you look at the track here, I know that there's a big drop here, just by looking at the visuals and the waveforms here. Now, what I would typically do is I'd go to this trackpad here and I'd run my finger along it while looking at that white marker there to get to the point of the song that I want to get to. However, the cue points are quite good for visually being able to look at the waveform, see different parts of the song, and then just being able to hit the hot cues here in order to get to that part of the song quicker than using the trackpad at the top. So, for example, I can see Mixing Key has put a yellow marker right at the beginning of the drop. So I know I can come over to the cue points over here and hit it. <laughs> and I'm right there on the drop. Or, for example, if I wanted to get to the end of the drop, right at the end of the drop, I know that the green button will get right to the end of the drop where the drop finishes and it goes boof. Ready? So it's good for that. So if I wanted to get to the beginning, I know it's put a red dot at the beginning. If I want to get to the build-up, it's blue. So here we go. This is the beginning of the song, red. If I want to get to the build up, I can just hit blue. So, you can see, it's a good program for just generally putting them in good places. Beginning, before the drop, after the drop, on the build up, simple things like that. And they're really useful. So there's a little tip for you guys. Okay guys, so first things first, let's talk about pop music. The top tip I can give you when it comes to putting cue points on pop music is to get to the bit of the song that people are going to instantly recognise, okay? This might be right at the first bar, or this might be a couple of bars in. 
Let me give you my thought process on a couple of random songs from my playlist and where I would set the cue point. Okay, so the first song I picked out was Hey Ya by The Outcast. The intro of the song sounds like this. One, two, three, go. Obviously, that is exactly where I put the hot cue because everybody knows from one, two, three what song it is. Listen. One, two, three. You're already at the main part of the song that everybody knows. <laughs> So guys, here's another song I picked out. It's Hot In Here by Nelly. Now this is an interesting track because I think you probably could get away with putting your cue point right at the beginning, or I think there's a secondary point which I would probably go for. So the beginning of the track sounds like this. Now what's interesting about that track is most people will know that is the intro to Hot In Here. However, as a DJ, I would probably go slightly further in to this point. Oh. The reason is the intro is a bit slower and even though everybody knows what's coming, I think it's better to just throw people straight into the main body of the song. Really basic mix there guys, but you get the idea. You either come in with the slower bit or you come in with the slightly faster bit. I would personally always opt to go for the faster bit, but you could always set a marker at the two points and on the spot choose which one you think's best. Another thing I did want to note is if you've got a really punchy bit of the song like this, oh, oh. you can begin to blend using that as a bit of a sample. So you can begin to sample track B as track A is still playing, and they can kind of feed one into the other doing that. Let me give you a really basic example so you can see what I'm talking about. Or if you really wanted to, you could add a bit more style to it like, like this. Some of you might love that, some of you might absolutely hate it, but I did want to throw it in there just to show you that's another option you can do with hot cues if you've got a really punchy beginning of the song. Okay guys, let's talk about setting hot cues for dance music. So I've jumped on to DJ Pro here, and I've got two tracks by Dead Mouse. The reason I'm using Dead Mouse is because typically his songs have really long intros and really long outros, which are perfect for beat matching. So let me show you where I'd set the hot cues on two of Dead Mouse's tracks if I was blending one into another. So we're going to blend strobe into four wear, okay? So we're just going to end up going to the end of Strobe here and playing the song from about here onwards. Which is the outro of the song. So the intro of Four Wear is just this kind of sound here. Which is nice, but you can't really beat match to that because you need two beats to do beat matching. And I can see that the intro sound lasts up until there where it gets really thick and I know that's exactly where the beat would come in. So if I scroll forward, let me just put the volume down, and I'm gonna scroll forward to here, this point here, you'll see that's where the beat comes in. So I would set my first cue point, which I've already done, to that beat there, which sounds like this. So that's where I set my first cue point. Now, when it comes to just blending the two, I know I'm ready to go. Let me give you an example.
and you're into track two. So it's a really good place. I had plenty of time because I know it's a dead mouse track, so I knew that beat was gonna last for absolutely ages, and I had so much time, I could blend really nicely and really slowly, which is what dead mouse's tracks are perfect for. Now, the great thing about dead mouse's tracks is the intro and the outro beat is so long, it gives you plenty of time to blend between the two tracks. But this isn't the case for all dance music. With some dance tracks, you only get about four or eight bars of beat to do your beat matching. So what I do, instead of putting loads of pressure on myself to do the blend within a restricted period of time, I'll go to the last two or three bars of the intro beat and I'll loop it. So the last little bit of the intro beat is looping round and round. Then I'll do my beat match and when I've taken away track A, I'll take the loop off and it will go into the beginning of track B when I choose. I hope that makes sense. Let me see if I can explain that a bit better to you. If you look at this track here, For Where, there's a huge intro and then it goes into the main part of the song. So what I'll do is I'll set my cue point just three bars back from where it goes into the main body of the song. You can see I've put a cue point right here just before it goes into the main part of the song. I then loop it by clicking this button here and I make sure I loop it over two bars. Now when I play it, it just loops and it sounds pretty normal, okay? Now I'm gonna do the same beat match as I did last time, except with just those last two bars looping. And when I've taken away track A completely, I'll take the loop off and it will instantly go into the main body of track B when I choose it to by simply taking the loop off. Let me show you. Now completely in track B and I now dictate when I want the song to actually come in by pressing the auto loop. It's off. And that's the beauty of doing it that way, is I had complete control over when the intro song came in. It had two benefits, really. Because it's on loop, I've got as long as I like to beat match, as long as track A doesn't run out of time. But remember, guys, you can always put track A on a loop as well, and then you've got as much time as you like. Then once track A is perfectly blended into track B, and you've got rid of track A, all I do, auto loop off, and it goes into track B, it goes into the body of track B when I dictate it does. So that's a really cool thing, and that's what I do quite a lot. Okay guys, finally I want to talk about my cue placement for the classic drop swap. So track A is built into a drop, and just as, about it's, just as it's about to play the drop, I play the drop from track B. So, there's two places you can put your cue placement here. The two tracks I'm going to use here are two Dioro songs. One is called Booty On Your Face, another one's called Flashlight, and it's a track he did with Rehab. If I go right up to this point here, this is exactly where the drop starts. So, if I play it... So that's one place you could put the cue point, and if you were to blend the two songs, it would sound a bit like this. But I'm not as much of a fan of doing that where you drop, you swap just the drops. I always like to include the little prelude to it where they usually scream something like three, two, one, let's go. Okay, so if we go back, we'll see that that version of this song is this. So I will set a cue point right there and I'll swap that bit of the song. Let me give you an example. Be 
Because I kind of feel like those little sections before the drop are kind of almost as famous as the actual drops a lot of the time. Like there's no other song that screams booty in your face before the drop. So that's the de kind of reason why I quite like adding that last little bit. Okay guys, so those are my top tips when it comes to hot cues, the places I put them, and the reasons why I put them there. I really hope this video has helped. If it has, make sure you give the video a like, because that will help me get more views, which is what I want to happen. And if you guys have got your own way of doing it that I haven't included, make sure you add it to the comment section below, because I'd love to hear about it. If you guys are new to DJing and you don't know how to do a lot of the beat matching that I did here and don't know how to use anything on the DJ decks you own, make sure you go to my website at beginnerdjlessons.com where I have a full course that will teach you everything you need to know about DJing, right from knowing nothing at all, right up to being able to do your first DJ gig. Finally guys, if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more weekly videos. I'll see you guys next week. Ciao!